What's up y'all and welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to tell you about an incredible journey I took to Japan for my second international conference on robotics and automation. The trip was to present my research for school, but it ended up being a pretty transformative experience with a lot of exploration, reflection, and surprisingly growth. But first, let's talk about the reason I went to Japan, my research. I finally presented my first paper at this year's ICRA, and I'll definitely say that publishing your first paper of a brand new project can sometimes be really difficult. So for me, having presented at this conference was a big milestone. If you're interested, you can check it out on archive or in the conference proceedings if you can get your hands on those. If you didn't watch my last vlog, I attended ICRA last year for a workshop and presented a really short, like three minute long presentation and did a small poster session kind of in the corner of the room. But this year, since I was in the main proceedings, I had a seven minute presentation and a spot in the main poster session. I was so nervous. I don't know if it was the nerves or just my outfit but I was sweating so bad and I felt like I was stumbling through my entire presentation but apparently nobody noticed so I'm just gonna keep trying to improve my presentation skills. During the presentation and the poster session people came up to me with some really good questions and that made me realize that extensions of and collaborations on this topic are much more possible than I thought. One paper this year, 10 next year, am I right? Now you know I gotta do a room tour. I stayed at the hotel that was connected to the conference and got a really nice suite. My sister came with me and she stayed in the front living room while I stayed in the main bedroom, but there was still a ton of space. And I must say the views at every point in the day were absolutely immaculate. Even at night, this Ferris wheel called the Cosmo Clock gave a really dope vibe and the sunrises were just absolutely gorgeous. The only bad thing about staying here was how good the room service was, to the point where we only had a few Japanese meals out in Japan. I did have some ramen at the airport on the way back, which was bomb, but I didn't even get sushi next time though, because after this trip, I am definitely coming back. Yes, honey. Again, here's the map. The day before my presentation, we took a bus tour from Tokyo to Mount Fuji. On the bus ride, we learned a lot about Japanese history and culture, and we had a very clear view of Mount Fuji already. It really felt like this trip was meant to be, because it apparently isn't common to have such a clear view of Mount Fuji on these tours, and these views were just the beginning. Our first stop was Mount Fuji's fifth station, where we got an up-close view of the volcano and obviously stopped at the gift shop. There were a lot of cool souvenirs, but we ended up getting these little bells from the tour and these little cute fan-style postcards before heading to the next stop. After that, we stopped for a traditional lunch, which was delicious, and that ended with a short drum performance. <laughs> The next stop was a boat tour at Lake Ashinoko in Hakone with another view of Mount Fuji that led to the Kamagataki ropeway for a mountaintop view of the volcano. I felt a bit of anxiety coming back because I knew that even though I was presenting a paper, I have a lot of work to do both in research and for work and all the other goals that I have. Grad school has really been a challenge. Everything has felt really difficult. My research progress has been slow, and even though publishing my first paper felt like a major accomplishment, there are times where I doubt if I'm capable enough, if I can ever become the person I aspire to be. But mindset really is everything. Times like this help me remember how big the world really is and how much more life there is to experience. It's ultimately up to me to make the most of it. And that's exactly what I did. The night after my presentation, we went to Shibuya and did a little bar crawl tour downtown. We had some highballs and also sake, and the highballs were really good, but the sake, <laughs> not so much. But they did get me ready for our final stop, which was at a karaoke bar, and that was definitely a lot of fun. The next day I visited the Yokohama Tower. At the top of the tower, there's this place called the Sky Garden where we got an amazing view in every direction from Yokohama to Tokyo and beyond. Like, just look at these views. The day of my flight, I had a little bit of time, so I got a chance to visit the Yokohama English Garden. I wanted to go to the Ashikaga Flower Garden, which is one of the more popular flower gardens in Japan. However, it was a couple hours away, but this flower garden was just a short trip from my hotel. Although the cherry blossoms are classic, they were sadly already out of season, but roses were still in season, so I still got to see some beautiful flowers. It was actually nice to stop and smell the roses. I think the one lesson I learned on this trip is simply the importance of balance. Let me know in the comments if you can relate at all. How have you learned to balance what's going on in your life? I know I haven't completely figured it out yet. 
but that's it for this vlog if you enjoyed it please like comment and subscribe follow me on ig if you want my story is really where it's at because i don't really be posting like that i hope i'll see y'all in the next one later